We're not an ostrich sticking our head in the sand. We see the obstacle. Don't give it power. Put the power into the solution. Focus on success. Hey, everyone. It's Andy Witkowski, New York Times bestselling author of Spark, Leading from the Front, Bet on You. I learned almost everything I know about leadership from my service in the United States Marine Corps, and I'm so excited about this season's Bet on You podcast as your host. I get to bring in incredible guests who help us all, me included, because I'm on this journey with you, develop the clarity, confidence, and courage to pursue our dreams. Not our small dreams, our big dreams. And I was so excited about this next guest, Bernice Flygirl Armour. She is a Marine contemporary of mine, but man, she is just a trailblazer. She is the first black female combat pilot our nation has seen. I'll say that again the first black female combat pilot in the military that our nation has ever seen. And so she's used to breaking barriers, but I don't think that's why she does things. She doesn't go out there to break barriers. She does things because it's a part of her vision for herself. And so when we think about getting clear, it's getting that vision. And then we think too about what do we need after we have clarity? Well, guess what? Vernice or friends call her V, she's gonna help us get gutsy that instinct that we have that's nagging at us to do something, she's going to help us get really into that and move that feeling and push it towards action. I cannot wait for this conversation. So let's get started. Hey V, I am so excited that you're here on the Bet On You podcast. I knew you were the perfect person to encourage our audience to take risks on themselves because of all the amazing things you've done in your career. But if you don't mind, like, tell us a little bit about you, how you got to be this awesome presence, keynoting in front of tens of thousands of people, inspiring, motivating people on social media. Can you share the behind the scenes sneak peek into what makes you or what's made you you? First of all, I just want to say, and I am excited <laughs> to be here too. And how did I get here? How did I get here in this moment sharing this very same breath with you? It all started out at the age of four. Oh, good. You skipped a few years. Congratulations. I knew you accelerated success, but wow. Zero to four, man. Point. Nothing. I wanted, to be a, I wanted to be a cop that rode a horse downtown. Oh, seriously. And when I got to college, I wrote, uh, well, when I got to college, I didn't have any money to send myself to school. My parents didn't have any money. So I ended up going to school on student loans and Pell Grants, which put me in a very unique situation called Broke. And ROTC had a flyer, free trip to Mardi Gras. I was like, what? And I didn't see the ROTC part at first. You know, I got up closer to the flyer, get all the information. Out. ROTC, Miller, what? Uh-uh. Partying has signed me up, right? So hook, line, and sinker. Um, and I also saw it as a way to help me prepare for what I really wanted to do, which was still at that point, be a police officer, right? So military, esprit de corps, physical fitness, everything that could help me get into police academy, excel once I was in, maybe even save my butt once I got out on the streets. Five weeks into ROTC leadership advance camp, this is like a year and a half later, after I marched seven days straight at Mardi Gras and did not party at all. <laughs> they kind of oversold you on that promise, didn't they? <laughs> I mean, that, well, that's the military for you, yeah. right? I mean, come on, you will see the world. I saw Iraq. <laughs> uh, but that's fast forwarding, right? That's fast forwarding. Um, long story short, I ended up seeing a black woman in a flight suit. And I said, what? That is cool. Why didn't I think of that? Better than, right, better than a horse, uh, right? <laughs> I can fly. Well, I mean, it was... It was something I hadn't even thought of. And I thought it was so exciting and juicy. I'm an adrenaline junkie, if you have not figured that out yet. And a um, unemployed comedian. I'm sure that'll come out in this podcast. But long story short, wanted to be a combat pilot. And I wanted to be a Marine, right? But the Marine Corps at the time didn't even allow women to be pilots because it was combat arms. And... Dakowitz, I can I hate saying acronyms, but I cannot remember what that stands for. But it was basically a committee of people who reviewed all the laws right back in 93 or whenever it was. And they opened up certain positions for women to be able to do to be more competitive in the military. And flying was in combat. 
was one of those. So the Marine Corps now had to let women be pilots in the Marine Corps. My grandfather was a Marine, Mumford Point Marine, World War II. That's incredible. I was going to ask. Oh, wow. So this is a family business. Like, this is significant. Third generation Marine Corps. That is amazing. That's right. That's right. So um, that's how, that was the short reader's digest of how I got here. Um, Failed the flight test the first time, passed it the second time. Um, Didn't get into officer candidate school the first year. As you know, women could only apply once a year. 88% 88% attrition rate. People never apply again after the first year. They get jobs other places or set their sights on something else. Second year I applied. I was part of that 12%. Didn't make it. 30 years of charm. Wasn't accepted. Oh, you Four lost years. me there. <laughs> I'm like, yes, finally. <laughs> v girl yeah, gets a no. chance. <laughs> yeah. right. Four years in, they're like, okay, this chick is not going away. Right? And I wasn't. So um, I got accepted, went through officer candidate school, graduated as a leader of Marines, December 1998, went through flight school, graduated with my Pensacola Wings of Gold on July 21st, 2001. That is incredible. I mean, did you? so you have broken many barriers and you obviously are very resilient. Where do you get that from? Man, you know, I've been asked that question a couple times. And funny enough, when I was in the Marine Corps, I was at a women in aviation event. And it's the first time because I was the only female Cobra pilot in my squadron out of 365 Marines, 67 pilots. Right. So um, let's just say my experience is a little different. Onboarding package was a little different. And at this point, it's all these women and we had a flight suit social. So all the military women out of women in aviation is maybe 20 of us. And it's the first time we were around other because most of us were the only or one of a few in our squadrons. Right. And the things that we were individually thinking were our imagination. It's like, Oh, wait a minute. No, that's a real thing. You're going through this too. Right. And it, and I go back to, family, my great grandmother, who was the first African-American female unity minister, right? And she would always say something good is going to come out of this, right? And my dad talking about words are powerful. And I call him Mr. Philosophy. We would go into the line at the grocery store. And if the cashier wasn't smiling when we got in the line, she was absolutely smiling when we left, right? So the whole resilience and determination, ambition, tenacity, grit, if you will. And um, and now I've mixed that with gutsy, as you know. How did I end up getting here, sticking with it, making choices, wanting to see it through? I mean, if I didn't, who would? I think it's the best question, right? Like you see everybody around you like, well, they're doing it. Why yeah. not me? And it connected back to that event, because sometimes I ramble. Uh, I remember asking the question, what do I really want? And before that, it was, what does the Marine Corps really want? If we're trying to get more women into the Marine Corps, well, like, well, what do they really want? And then I turned that question around. What do I really want? What do I really want? And that why, and we've heard it out there, it's almost cliche-ish now. What's your why? What's your why? But no, seriously, what's your why? And how was that a grounding force, belief and value for what you want to create in your life? I think that's a scary proposition for a lot of people, specifically mid-career professionals, because so much of their career, so much of their life is responding to what they should do. You should get this degree. You should do that. You should go here. You should go there. And their company is, again, creating these amazing career pathways for them. And then they get to, wait a second, I'm not happy. I've been doing what everybody else tells me to do. And now I want to know where my fulfillment is. And I just don't know. Have you ever had that experience where you're like, shoot, what does V want to do? And if you do, what do you do to get clear? Yeah, like every other week. (laughs) (laughs) Because like there's the big goal and there's the like the big purpose I feel I'm here for, right? Uh, Connection. Uh, connection, a uh, healing force connecting in the world, right? And how I specifically do that. It's like Walt Disney. He was very clear. He wanted to create something so amazing that people from around the world would want to come check it out. 
That was his beginning vision. That was his why. That was his desire, right? Then he came up with Pocahontas and Disney Video and Disney World and Disney Tokyo and all this other stuff, right? So the big overriding purpose, yes, that's going to be my North Star. And the the mission or the tactics on what do I want? How do I want to get there? What's going to get me there is a constant reevaluation. And some moments bigger than others, COVID, sitting on my deck, who who knew that what I did for a living um, in, involves more than 10 people getting together in a confined space, right? And felt like I got caught with my pants down and and because I wasn't doing all the digital stuff, right? I was carrying my golf clubs around, going to events, speaking on stage, snowboarding. I was having a good time. And in that moment, I had to reevaluate. I got my journal. I walked around the lake. I got to re reimagine, right? What do I really want? How do I want to do it? Then I got to reinvent. What's the plan? Then I got to reinvigorate it because it was like death by PowerPoint at certain times, right? I think it's the most many of us had been on a screen every day to connect with people. And then five, re-attack again and again and again and again, right? There are only two ways to succeed the first time or again. <laughs> Wait, that's like the best. Can you say that one more time? There's only two ways to succeed the first time, then again. Oh, if I could have my phone open, I would retweet that. That is like the best, I'm sure. <laughs> but you've brought up something really important that I think a lot of people dismiss sometimes or they don't take it as seriously. You're talking about journaling. You're talking about walking. Essentially, you're talking about reflecting. And those are just a couple of reflective practices. But my, my belief is like you can't get clear about what you want to do when you schedule it in Outlook from Tuesday from 2 to 3 p.m. Like you actually have to go through a process. Can you talk a little bit more about your process too? I'm fascinated by that. And you know, honestly, I'm working on my process. Like um, this right here is some string wrapped around my wrist. It's for a certain spiritual practice where every day you meditate twice a day and the string is just to remind me to do that meditation, mm -hmm. right? And meditation can take on a lot of different forms. Prayer is a form of meditation. Walking is a form of meditation, right? Walking meditation. But in this walking meditation, you're not walking with earphones and listening to the news, right? You're actually reconnecting with the world around you, whether you're walking in downtown Manhattan and you just hear the symphony of busyness and world and it's all just, you know, creating this white noise where you can just zone into yourself, right? Or you live out kind of where I live and there's a lake and there's countryside and there's trees and there's woods, right? Or how can you get to, even if you're in Manhattan, how could you get to a central park or somewhere else that has living nature, around where you can just connect back to the world and how we're just this little being, this little physical soulful being in a world of now 8 billion people, right? Why am I here in this moment living this life? There have been billions of souls on this planet before me. Billions will be here after me. 150 years from now, none of us on this planet will be here unless cryo has come into full effect by then. <laughs> well, our next guest is going to be all about biohacking. So we'll go there. But but until we figure that out, yeah, the, the reflection on the purpose. And I think this is where gutsiness comes in. And when you start to realize, okay, I got some ideas. A lot of people try to create the perfect plan. Like the planning stuff is really fun because you can get out your vision board then. You can start to, you know, craft. You can start to put it and lay it out. But then it comes to doing. And that's where people get scared. But you're saying get gutsy. Can you talk about that bias towards action? Because I know in our shared Marine Corps background, it was all about go. <laughs> Do things go, when you're scared, right? right? Well, Do it when you're scared. Right. Iron Mike, follow me. Come on, we're, we're out of here. So if I were to back up and talk about gutsy and the gutsy move, mm -hmm. right? What's the gutsy move in your gut? You know it's right. It takes guts to do it, but you got to take action. If you don't take action, it wasn't a gutsy move. It was just a gutsy idea. Thought, <laughs> right? Idea, um, ideation, whatever. And of course, we love the beginning phase of the dreaming Right, because we're dreaming. Who doesn't love thinking about, oh my God, when I win the lottery and 
I get the Powerball. And, right? It's fun to ask people, if you were to have $20 million, what would you do? Oh my gosh, they have the biggest smile. They go into the dreaming, right? And when we look at our personal dream, our vision, our goal, what's the first step after you have solidified the goal? Now we have to take action, right? Because it's not going to happen on its own. So five-step process, right? Create your create your vision, your plan. What's your flight plan? What's your dream is what I'm saying. And do not think about the how in that moment because the how starts derailing us because so many times people get discouraged because they don't know how, they don't have the resources, they don't have the budget, they don't have the blah, 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 letters after their name, certification, whatever mm-hmm. you want to say, right? And how do we, my friend Marsha Weider said, how do we bring our reality up to let, meet our dream versus letting the tension between the two bring our dream down to meet reality? So just number one, what's your dream? Number two, now we do the pros and cons. I call it the pre-flight. When I go out to the aircraft, check everything out, make sure we can have a safe mission, right? We mitigate the risk, pre-flight, that's step two. Step three, take off. That's when we launch, right? If you think of the shuttle, taking off seconds you see the clouds billowing and the ground is shaking because you're sitting in the vip bleachers of course because i know somebody because i got my connections working right yeah yeah. (laughs) and you don't know whether that shuttle is 50 feet off the ground or five feet but you know it has left the surface of our planet Mm -hmm. and within moments it is circling our globe in execution mode right and then finally review recharge reattack review your successes and your failures And if that's one thing Marines do, we know how to do a debrief, right? What did we do right? What could we have done better? Successes and failures. Because we want to repeat our successes and make those best practices that we can do again and again and again. And the failures, tweak them to become successes where they can become our best practices, right? Recharge emotionally, physically, intellectually. Emotionally, take a Saturday off, sleep in, rest in the bed, take a walk. It's some of those practices that you asked me about earlier, right? whether it's the meditation, the journaling, the reflecting, talking to a, a best friend or a confidant and not keeping it all in or bottled up or a therapist, best thing in the world, therapy, right? Recharge emotionally, physically. Are you drinking enough water? Are you moving your body, right? And intellectually, that's why we're here actually on this podcast, you and I having this conversation and those later that are going to listen or view just to, as Stephen Covey would say, sharpen the saw. Because we can go out there and just keep hacking away, hacking away, hacking away. But if we pull back just for a few moments to sharpen it up, we're going to be so much more effective at cutting down that tree. And if we look at ourselves as the saw and how we how are we cutting down the trees, the obstacles in life and creating opportunities out of every single obstacle. I believe every obstacle is just a hidden opportunity. Napoleon Hill said it best in his book, Think and Grow Rich, 1936, right? Mm-hmm. Most of the time opportunities come disguised as an obstacle. Oh, I believe that entirely. And it's so funny too, as you talk about this intellectual recharge that we need. I find I am a much more interesting person when I'm reading or listening to interesting things, because suddenly I have something interesting to say to my husband, to my kids, to my friends. Right. <laughs> it's like, but it's an enriching, like I get more connection from right. these interesting conversations to like, you know what I just heard? What do you think about that? And suddenly, better relationship That's- too. Better relationship. Because we're growing. Tony Robbins, we're either growing or we're rotting, right? And once a mind has been expanded, you can't bring it back. It's like once you see that thing, it's almost like you cannot not see it in your head, right? So how are we growing personal development, developing ourselves every day? And that is another action And sometimes, many times, that takes courage, clarity, right? Uh, Guidance to move forward. Because if we're learning something we didn't know before, who's helping us get that information? And it's either from an experience that we've personally gone through and it's our own personal wisdom that we've created, or we're getting wisdom from someone else who went through an experience. This is such an inspiring conversation. Like, again, you motivate me, V. Like, you are such a force. And that sounds so cheesy to say. <laughs> I go by Captain Armor instead of Captain America, just so we're all clear. Captain <laughs> Armor. Uh, one final question for people, and I think this is really yeah. important too, because you do talk a lot too about just, you know, again, try, 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 try again. 
Can you yeah. tell me what you do when you're down? Can you tell me what you do to pick yourself up? Mm, yes. And I want to offer folks a resource for this Please very do. thing too. Um, and it's a URL, getclearwithflygirl.com. Getclearwithflygirl.com. And it, it takes you through the steps of the gutsy move and, and getting clear, right? And when we're down, when it's tough, like what what did I personally do to get clear? I remember there was a really tough moment in the squadron. And again, 365 Marines, 67 pilots. I was the only female pilot at the time. The women's bathroom was my refuge. And one morning I could feel that the bathroom just wasn't going to be enough. And I could feel the emotion swelling up, the tears, the, the, the stinging in my eyes, which meant the tears weren't far away. And I was not going to break down in the squadron. I grabbed my keys, drove to the beach, which was a quick five minutes away, right? Camp Pendleton, San Diego. And by the time I got there, I was bawling. I was crying my eyes out. And I called up mom. And mom said, baby, you did not come this far, this long to give up now. Stop crying, dry your eyes, and go back to work. So what did I do? I stopped crying, I dropped my eyes, and I went back to work. And what was mom essentially saying? Well, and Maria, we just suck it up, right? And what I, how, the phrase when people would ask me if I had challenges and obstacles and sexism, racism, and discrimination, it was like, acknowledge the obstacles. Don't give them power. Like, yeah, every day. And don't give them power. I love that. Don't give them power. Acknowledge the obstacles. Like, we're not an ostrich sticking our head in the sand. We see the obstacle. Don't give it power. Put the power into the solution. Find the, find the solution. Focus on success. And that, my friends, is why we invited V here. Where can people learn more about you? How can they follow you? How can they stay inspired? Uh, the, social, uh, the username on all the social, whether it's YouTube or LinkedIn or Facebook, um, is Bernice Fly Girl Armor. And, of course, if you want the, the resource on uh, the gutsy move, it's Get Clear with Fly Girl. Dot com. Well, thank you so and much. And we'll put this in the show notes too. So you will not be disappointed by staying engaged and connected with Bernice Fly Girl Armor. Thank you so much for being here. Hey, it was awesome to be here. Stay gutsy. <laughs> you as well, friend. Bye-bye. <laughs> Hey, I wasn't wrong about that, was I? She is a force. I loved everything that V had to offer, but I'm going to talk about three things that really meant a lot to me in the conversation, things that I can take, put them in my pocket, carry around with me, and really guidance that we can live and lead our lives by. The first thing that I just loved was that we have to grow every single day. Every single day, there is an opportunity to take a nugget, to take an idea, to take something and push it, to really just expand, um, or guess, our own expectations of ourselves, or even push our influence a little bit further. So we don't want Groundhog Day. We want a new day. We want a new opportunity to really just test and think about why we're here and what we can achieve. The second thing that just made me just smile on the inside was Marines know how to debrief. And what that is, is that after every exercise or event or something like a campaign that you did, you'd spend time talking about it, reflecting, thinking what went well, what didn't go well. And I don't think we do that enough in our lives. We'll sometimes kind of pass through just an experience and say, you know, okay, that was interesting and move on without taking that reflective practice to think about the lessons learned and the lessons applied. So maybe that's an idea that you can take for yourself. Um, if you go in for a promotion, if you go into a sales meeting, if you've got this big presentation, pause after it, think about what did I do well specifically? Where can I get better? And then you can start to create your own action plan for development. I think so many times we wait for others to tell tell us how we should develop ourselves, but hey, why not put your own business plan together, your personal business plan, take what you're doing in your working world from planning perspective and apply it in your life. The third is, I love that story, and I love it when strong, confident, tough leaders tell us that they cried, or at least had those 
burning instincts to cry and what they go through because we're humans, we're emotional beings. Naturally, things are really going to bother us. And maybe crying's not your thing. Maybe it's something else that doesn't allow you to be your best in the moment where you're going to have to take a step back and just kind of pull yourself together. Whatever it is, remind yourself that not to give your obstacles power. You know, take that experience and really be accountable to it and think, what can I do? And of course, sometimes a good phone call to mom is just what you need to get yourself back in the game. I just want to really invite you too to angieconnect.com podcast. I've got my soft power series. We've got a lot of fun things coming up in the future. Ways that you can start to take these concepts and ideas and you don't have to wait a week to get them. Every single day you can get that nugget of inspiration from my guests, from the work that I'm doing and just allow that to fuel you on your bet on your journey. Can't wait to see you next podcast. See you soon.